Thanks for joining me today. It's Sasha with Little Duggar Treat, owner and creator of the Little Duggar Treat and LittleDuggarTreat.com. We are in the kitchen today and we are going to make some tea for your dogs to help with anxiety, to reduce stress, and for overall general health. So I have with me the setup. I'm gonna just move this down so you can see. Today we're gonna to be working with a couple of my favorite herbs um, and natural remedies for both health and for uh, long-term sustainability of general health. So these are all safe to give to your dogs. So what we've got here, we have basic chamomile. This happens to be a chamomile blend and I'll show you that in a few minutes. We have rose petals. Rose petals are fantastic for overall general health and well-being. We have natural dandelion, just the dandelion that would grow in your front yard or backyard. As long as it hasn't been peed on, <laughs> it's safe to consume. And then we also have over here, mint. So these are the four that I would go to in order to reduce stress and anxiety for your dog. Now, a couple of these are gonna help with other things besides stress and anxiety. Uh, the chamomile and the dandelion will help aid in digestion, and the mint will help aid in digestion and also help reduce any kind of stomach irritants. Um, so if you notice your dog eating grass, mint is a fantastic one to give to your dog. So we have here, these are the four natural herbal supplement remedies that I would give to my dogs, and I do, in order to help reduce anxiety or stress. Now, when would I give these to my dogs? I would give these to my dogs uh, anytime that there's going to be added stress or strain on your dog's environment. So what does that mean? It means holidays. So if you're having family over for, let's say, a Thanksgiving holiday, a Christmas holiday, any other kind of celebratory situation like a birthday or a reunion, definitely you can use these to help reduce that stress and anxiety and just make your dog a little bit more mellow. You can also use these for things like fireworks for the 4th of July or for our New Year's where you're going to hear those loud booms. It'll help just kind of reduce that stress for your pup. You can also use them if there's a big change, like a life change, like you're moving uh, to a new environment. You can use it uh, during the actual move. So while you're packing everything up, that's a big stress for a dog to have things be changing like that. Definitely in the new environment for the first day or so while they're acclimating to the new space or if you have anyone staying with you. So if you have some family that's gonna be staying for let's say a summer vacation or a holiday during that, that time frame, an in-home uh, in guest can definitely increase anxiety and stress in a dog. Whether it's awesome and they love having that guest there, just the environment change can cause stress. Now what is stress in a dog? Now stress, a lot of times people associate to something negative. Stress does not mean negative. The body sees positive and negative stress in the exact same way. So you can have stress in your body from something negative that's happened like a death in the family or a move or loud booming sounds from fireworks, but you can also have stress for something that's really exciting and really fun. So let's say your, your, um, your dog goes out to a park and they're just, they run for three to four hours. They're just having the time of their life. That still can cause stress in the body. So you can give your dog when they come back from the park. Now, if they're just super tired and they pass out, that's fantastic. But if you're noticing a lot of kind of anxious, nervous tension in your pup, you can definitely give this to them to kind of help mellow them out a little bit. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. And it's pretty simple, but again, it makes the biggest impact in your dog's environment and natural state. So what we have here is, I'm gonna show you again, we have some of my favorite, my favorite things. We have cute little teacups. Now, for me, presentation is everything. So I get these at, uh, th at you know consignment shops, thrift shops, things like that. And you can pretty much get these for anywhere from like anywhere from like two dollars to like five dollars at any of your local consignment stores, like a thrift store, whatnot. And then what you do, pretty much, I have a a water kettle that is an automatic one. If you're going to make this on your stove in a natural kettle, you don't need to bring it up to boiling. I only use the delicate, so about 160 degrees, and then I will literally make sure that whatever I'm doing, I'll use some ice cubes. So these are my natural chicken bouillon that I make. 
I'll, into ice cubes. I'll pop those in afterwards. It also adds a little bit of that chicken flavor so it's more exciting for the dog. Or I'll just use a little natural milk to kind of cool it down. So what you're gonna do is you're literally going to take your chamomile and maybe a dandelion and you're going to literally steep this in a cup for roughly five minutes. You're going to allow it to kind of breathe and float around in there. Loose leaf tea is the best because it really allows everything to open up and bloom in the water. Now again, you don't have to boil the water in order to get, you don't have to boil the water in order to get uh, a quality steep. You can just have very hot water. And for the purposes of your pup, you don't want them to burn their tongue or burn any of their tissue inside their mouth. So you're gonna need to make sure it's definitely cooled off because your pup won't recognize the temperature necessarily as too hot until they've already consumed it and then it's burned their tongue. So nobody enjoys a burnt tongue. So once this has steeped for five minutes, it's ready to go ahead and to pour into the cup for your pups. Now again, you can combine these elements or you can use them separately. And I personally, I like to use the dandelion and the chamomile together. You can also use one that I don't have in season. I have an edible garden that I've created for my dogs, but one that's, uh, that's no longer in season right now in my garden is catnip. Catnip has a similar effect, but more mellow than it has on, on cats. So you can use catnip on a dog. You can also consume catnip as a person, and it will have a, it will have a mellowing effect similar to chamomile but it won't be as intense as when you see a cat go nuts over catnip. So dogs have a kind of a mellowing effect from it also. Now, I will show you in a moment, I'm just gonna let this steep for another couple seconds. You'll see the leaves and, and the flower petal there just kind of opening up. You'll wanna make sure that it gets in there enough that it can actually, it, it gives the water the flavor because those the properties that are gonna seep into, steep into the water is what you want your dog to actually consume. So I'm going to show you a couple of the other ones here. Again, mint I usually use all by itself. Mint is great in digestion. So any kind of tummy irritant, if your dog does get a hold of something, or if they've had a food change and they're just not enjoying the food change, you can put some mint leaves. I just use these. These are from my garden. And what I do for mint is I literally, you want to break it a little bit. So you just fold the leaf in half and just twist and that'll start to kind of break up the leaf enough that when you put it in water, you'll start to have more of the mint. Now, you'll be able to smell a difference. If you smell the leaf, it'll smell good, but then when you break it, you'll all of a sudden, all of that aroma from the mint will come out and that's what you want in the water. The other thing I'm gonna mention, you can also uh, get just some of the oils out of some of these things. I'll show you that also. This is a tiny mortar pestle set. Again, you can get these at like consignment stores. You can find them on Amazon or whatnot. I like thrift stores for some of these things because you get them for just like two or three bucks. But you basically, you're going to start to, um, if you can see here, you're just going to start to smush the rose petal. And you'll notice that the oil from the rose petal is coming out. That you can put into the tea as well. If you don't want to actually put the leaf in, you can just put some of the rose oil in there. You can also put some rose oil with mint. That tastes really good. <laughs> and it starts to smell amazing. Now a couple of these, a couple of the side notes on this. Number one, your dog should never have an adverse reaction to this. This should be very natural for your pup. So if you notice anything weird, your dog's having a reaction or getting really itchy, stop immediately, seek the advice of a vet. But for the most part, your dog should not have any complications with these things. Now, secondary, you should not use this as a substitute for water. So this is a aid in uh, calming, but the, your dog should always have access to fresh, clean water without any particles or, or particulates in it, any extra things. Now, this is still very hydrating. So you can give this to your dog on a hot day or whatnot. And actually, um, one thing that will be really fun for your pup is their olfactory nerves, which are basically in the, uh, the top back of their mouth. You'll notice that a dog or a cat will go, 
when they're smelling something that's that's stimulating their olfactory nerves and this mint uh, and the rose oil and the chamomile and the, the catnip and, and whatnot the dandelion really will stimulate those so you'll see your dog smelling them just because it's it's drawing in all of their senses and again is wonderful stimulation for your pup and then also has a nice calming effect so when I say stimulation, I mean it's using those olfactory nerves in a positive way opposed to um, getting them too excited. This smells wonderful. And so you'll notice that the oil right there is coming out. And then what you can do is literally just pour a little water in and allow it to soak. So this is a, now a mint rose soak. And now the thing about this is you can, you can either let your dog drink this by itself or what I like to do for presentation is I like to stick it either in a little tiny teacup. Now, these are fantastic for little dogs. Um, if you have a larger dog or if you have a dog with a, um, a wider face like a Shih Tzu or a Pekingese or whatnot or a pug, um, you can just use the actual saucer, the actual saucer dish and just pour it on in there. And so again, you don't have to necessarily get all the leaves. Some dogs will eat the leaves and the petals and they love it. Others aren't that into it. What I do afterwards is I'll either add a little cream or a little milk just to cool it off and you get that wonderful texture now that's being created or what you can also do, I'll show you another one, is you can literally just steep it inside the little dish. Here's, here's a dandelion one. Now, one other side note, your dog doesn't even necessarily have to drink this in order to still get some of the calming benefits from it. So if you find that, that just steeping some chamomile tea and letting your dog smell it to stimulate those olfactory nerves brings in a, a state of calm, that's fantastic. That's all, that's your goal. Your goal is just to reduce the anxiety and, and aid in that, in that calming effect. So just like humans, you don't necessarily have to even drink the tea to still enjoy the aroma and the benefit you get sort of from the mental calming aspect. So what I also do is my, and I've shown this in other videos, my bouillon, my natural chicken water bouillon that I make. This one's starting to drip because I've had it sitting out. But this is a little ice cube and I'll, I'll pop that in there so it'll taste a little bit more like chicken uh, because of that and you can see that the particulates this particular ice cube has a few more of the actual like chicken particulates in it. So this particular one, once it melts, it's totally suitable to give to your dog. And I would just, me personally, I just leave the petals in and let my pups either lick around it. Or for instance, my Pomeranian will either, usually she licks all the water first and then she will eat the actual leaves. So this is, this is one that's ready to go for my pup. And then another one here, Again, this one, this one is ready to go with the leave and mint and a little bit of milk in there. And my dogs would lick that up like crazy. And then the third one here, this one is now fully steeped, so it's ready to go. And again, you can just pour it into a saucer you can just pour it into a saucer and leave it like that. And then if it's still a little bit hot to the touch, I would just pop in another, this is the chamomile and it's hard to see because it's clear, but this one you can just pop in there. Now as an added extra bonus, if your dog is a really high anxiety pup, you can take some of the little particulates and just kind of sprinkle them around and they will digest those. That's okay. It's okay for them to digest it. Tea is completely edible. So even, you know, as humans, we don't want to, you know, have all those little tiny pieces in our mouth. So we steep it in, in and then keep the particulates out. But all of the tea is consumable. So now these are all natural herbal teas. Never give your dog one with caffeine. Um, and then also, I'm gonna just let you know, if you're not into making tea or growing these in your garden, my favorite one that I go to, this is my personal favorite one, this is not a uh, paid promotion, I just love this. I found this in Hood River on vacation one time, and it is my favorite tea. I literally consume this, I should buy stock in the company. I literally consume this at least twice a day. 
This is what it looks like. And so you can literally just steep this right here for your dogs. So you can either cut it open and, and put it into um, a, a strainer like this. You can just leave, the, these are fantastic tea bags and so there's lots of room for it to open up and bloom. You can just leave it like that or you can go ahead and, um, and let your dog actually eat the particulates as well. So they'll, they'll get digestive benefits, they'll get calming benefits, and, uh, and just the health properties are great for digestion. This one right here is called Meadow, and the company is Stephen Smith Tea Maker. This is caffeine free, and it's chamomile, rooibos, fragrant hyssop, and rose petal. So all the things that your dog can actually consume. And one is, this usually goes for about, um, on Amazon, I can usually find it for about eight to nine dollars for a full box, and then at PCC, my local PCC usually has it for ten to eleven, and then they usually do deals. So that's the one I would recommend if you don't feel like making it in your own garden or picking it. Now, some of these things are very easy to do. So obviously, they're also seasonal. So if you don't want to have to worry about the season specifically, you can always just keep a box of that on hand or any other natural chamomile or mint tea that you want to keep on hand. That's totally fine, especially in the winter months if you don't have an indoor garden. But again, these are all pretty, pretty much available in, in most yards that are super easy to actually garden. So um, dandelion is gonna go basically anywhere. It used to be a natural remedy, go-to remedy for um, many cultures, and we've turned it into a weed, but it's actually fantastic. You can literally eat this, you can, you can put them in pancakes, you can put them in your tea, you can put them in anything you're gonna make, like a muffin, and you'll still get the benefits from it. Um, rose petals, again, you know, it's very difficult to damage and kill a rose bush. Uh, if you do, uh, they'll just come back as a natural climbing rose, and that's fantastic. Mint is very easy to make in a garden, and then also the chamomile and the catnip are actually pretty easy to produce. You can produce them in, in a, a plant potted garden, and you can keep that indoors in the winter, and just, I usually put mine outside in the summer. And then, um, and then also you can dry these, or freeze them. Now they won't keep their pretty color, but you can pop these in a freezer if you know that the season's coming to an end. You can just pop some, store some. Um, I only store things in the freezer for about a month or two. So um, if you dry them yourself, then you can store them for about six months, as long as they're in an in a airtight container that doesn't have light uh, reflecting off of it. So you wanna make sure it's a, a completely sealed dark container, and then they'll store for about six months as you're using them. And again, some of the extra things I add to the tea to make them a little bit more exciting for a dog that doesn't necessarily, isn't used to drinking the tea and naturally enjoying them, is a little bit of the chicken bouillon or some milk. So if your dog has any allergies to dairy, I would avoid the milk. You can also use um, just a little bit of natural, uh, you know, just some particulates of their favorite treat or whatnot. You can soak that in there with it and then it will taste like that also. So the idea is basically just to get them to drink it and then it has that calming effect. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Again, the teacups are fantastic and I usually get those if you like the little teacups and you have small dogs or if you just like, uh, you need a jumbo teacup bowl, thrift shops are great for that. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, write comments below. Please like this, share, and uh, check out our Instagram page and our YouTube channel. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.